Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, August 31st. Thank you for joining. Let's begin with prayer. Father God, we praise your name when we give all the glory to you. And once again, we thank you for the opportunity to get together in prayer, to get together with the message that you have continually for each and every one of us as we remain in a relationship with you. We pray, Father God, that each and every one of us continually maintain a relationship with you, continually look to you for strength, and support for guidance and for wisdom. We love you, Father God, and we pray all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. We are in Genesis 17, 15 through 27, with titles such as All of God, Holy Laughter, Not Through Our Own Power, and Truly Members. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. Abraham fell face down. He laughed and said to himself, Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of ninety? And Abraham said to God, If only Ishmael might live under your blessing. Then God said, Yes, but your wife Sarah will bear you a son and you will call him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. I will surely bless him. I will make him fruitful and will greatly increase his numbers. He will be the father of 12 rulers and I will make him into a great nation. But like my covenant, I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you by this time next year. When he had finished speaking with Abraham, God went up from him. On that very day, Abraham took his son Ishmael and all those born in his household or bought with his money, every male in his household, and circumcised them as God told him. Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised and his son Ishmael was 13. Abraham and his son Ishmael were both circumcised on that very day. And every male in Abraham's household including those born in his, in his household or bought from a foreigner, were circumcised with him. In 15 through 21, what we have is Abraham's son will be named Isaac. Isaac happens to mean laughter. Of course, that's what Abraham did when God told him that he would have a baby, that his wife would have a baby. He laughed about it. God has a plan for us far above anything we could ever imagine. In 17, Abraham fell face down. He laughed and said to himself, will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? God made a promise to Abraham, but made him wait a quarter of a century to fulfill that promise. God acts on behalf of those who wait for him. So be encouraged to wait on God's timing. We know that God's timing is perfect all the time. So just pray to be patient. Pray to be patient about God's timing. Maybe what you're asking for, maybe what you're praying about is not what God wants for you. And then when you do have this huge blessing that you never imagined, look back, reflect on being thankful that God did not answer the prayer that you specifically asked for but a much greater blessing. In 22 through 27, we are told that Isaac will be the result of God's plan. Walk with God step by step, waiting for his timing, his power, for his glory only. In 23 through 27, Abraham obeyed God and saw to it that every male in his household were circumcised despite his doubts. Sometimes submitting to God will involve sacrifice and pain, but we still are to be obedient to God. Just do it. Just follow what God's plan is for you. Let's not question God, but let's just be obedient to God. He's faithful to us continually, 24 seven, he's faithful. So let's give back to God. When God has a plan for us, Step out of your comfort zone and go forward with that plan. And you will 
be glad that you trusted in God. When you see the results of God's plan, when you see the results of your obedience, a covenant between God and the generations of Jews to come is what also is happening here. God is making a covenant with Abraham. In Genesis 17, 10 through 14, it actually says, this is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and your descendants after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised and you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin and it shall be the sign of a covenant between me and you. And every male among you who is eight days old shall be circumcised throughout your generations. A servant who is born in the house or who is bought with money from any foreigner who is not your descendant. A servant who is born in your house or who is bought with your money shall surely be circumcised. Thus shall my covenant be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. But an uncircumcised male who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin that person shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. So why did God require circumcision in those days? A sign of obedience to God in all matters? A sign of belonging to God's covenant people? Once circumcised, the man would be identified as one of God's chosen people forever. As a symbol of coving, cutting off old life of sin, purifying one's heart and dedicating, dedicating oneself to God. So we, we do know that Ishmael was 13 when he was circumcised and Abraham was circumcised at the age of 99. At this, at this particular time, they were all different ages. It wasn't infants. It was to be infants going forward, just as we also do now. Our male babies are circumcised. But at that time, God was making this covenant and he wanted everyone circumcised right now. So they were all different ages, met all different ages, like all across the board, but it was God making this covenant. And this is what his, his command was to circumcise all the male. Circumcision more than any other practice at that time separated God's people from their pagan neighbors. Circumcision was essential to develop the pure worship of the one true God. We are reminded that with faith, let God have the control. He enables, he empowers, and he provides to each and every one of us. He has our backs 24 seven. Be comforted knowing that God has our backs. He doesn't want us to fail. He doesn't want us to fall. He doesn't want us to be unhappy. God is there for us. Maintain a relationship with him. Get to know him better. Go to him more often. God loves us and he always will. Even when we go astray, God will still love us. He will still seek us. He still wants us back. So pray each and every day that you can be part of God's plan, that you can be obedient to his plan, that you hear his voice and that you respond. Let's pray. Father God, we pray that each and every one of us does have a relationship with you and that we do maintain that relationship and that we do listen for your voice, that we do come to you continually with our prayers and with our thanksgiving. Even though you know what we're going through, Father God, we want to bring it to you. We want to share it with you. We pray, Father God, that we continually bless our fellow brothers and sisters and that we bless others that we be there for those who do not know you, who do not have a relationship with you, and that we encourage each and every one who is living in darkness to come into the light, to be part of our love, to be part of the faith that we have with each other, to be part of sharing you and loving you and knowing you, being comforted by you. We pray, Father God, that we take advantage of any opportunity any opportunity at all that you place someone in our lives that you want to have in your kingdom here on earth. So we pray, Father God, that we share with boldness, that we look with anticipation for opportunities to share you. 
We love you, Father God, and we pray all this in the precious name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Have a week filled with blessings. Bless someone this week and have that blessing come right back at you. Bye-bye.